So I wanted to show you guys um, <clears throat> a little bit more on the detail side of it. As you can see in the, like around the teeth area, what I did was I took, I have a, a razor tip burner and it's a uh, dual burner so it has the two different ports that you can plug cords into and then two different pen mounts so you can have you can be working two pens and then you just switch you know back and forth between you know which pen you want to use and then you, there's a little bit of a delay you have to wait for the pen to to heat up and then you just set the temperature to what you want now one of the things that I've noticed is like I use a shading tip and I'm, I'm using fixed tip pins but I was using my shading tip to do a lot of the the eye work the cheek work the head and whatnot and that's certainly not done and then the outside that's not done what happened this week is I actually broke the tip um, it heated and I, I fatigued it so what I did is I ordered another tip that's a little bit heavier duty and because this is actually maple so it's a little it's a little harder um, so a poplar that I do a lot in poplar too and it's not quite as hard of a wood it's a little softer and I'll just show you here's a piece that I've been working on for um, mother-in-law she has she raises or has Welsh corgis and these are ones that she's had uh, three of these are deceased and so it's kind of a little memorial thing for her and, whoop sorry and uh, so that's a project that I'm working on but this is actually popper poplar and so each one I'm using you know again the shading and the um, kind of a razor a razor tip in to get the hard lines for the hair use that for feathering as well again I probably use I don't really use that many tips and they do sell a lot of different tips for different techniques they actually sell a a feathering um, tip which I haven't used I may use it in the future we'll see but my technique is a little different speaking of dogs there's a bunch of them in the background okay so getting back to the detail on this so I use the calligraphy tip and when you heat up the calligraphy tip you can see that it um, I injured my fingers this last week so um it slowed me down a bit but anyway the um, I noticed that the heat because it's a smaller surface area than say a shading tip or a heavier tip um, it heats up a lot higher with a lower temperature setting so that's maybe getting a little too much detail if you're you know maybe not using one of these type of units and razor tip is not the only um, seller of, of you know the wood burners but that's the one I use <coughs> um, so anyway just wanted to point out that kind of like a dentist you know I was going through through the the shading, the dark, and the in the around the teeth, okay, in the real fine areas, um, not the shading, but the say the detailed black lines, some of the cracks in the the skull, and <clears throat> then I'll go back in once I get the a different tip, and I'll lay in the darker on the. But this is blocking out. I'm just trying to get a good feel for the blocking out for how it's going to look overall kind of the feel of the, of the shape the shading I'm going to carry the shading out a lot farther and you can see that uh, a little bit later and then I wanted to point out in this particular one as well I'm going to be doing some um, work in terms of like if you have an overburn area and I've included this in my book uh, how to wood burn your dragon that you can get on Kindle or you can get on uh, Lulu uh, digital form or you can go to my website firefingerart.com and and uh, email me or call me and I can send you a copy pretty cheap sent sell it for like seven bucks but anyway um, part of that and what was included in the book that I haven't shown I think on any of my videos is how to you know if you've got an area that you've say you've burnt um, what I call overburning 
um, you've gone beyond the area that you meant to, you slip, okay? So it's, it's a mistake. And so what you want to do is you want to take out that mistake. So what you do is you get a razor blade and you can, you can scrape that area out little at a time. You just kind of scrape it down and use, you, you scrape it side, you know, don't cut into it like this because now um, you don't have control when you're going the blade. And I know they always teach you to, you we're using a knife and whittling, you always whittle away from you, okay? In this case, you're kind of working towards you and I use my couple fingers to steady myself and then I scrape, you know, almost scraping plaque off the guy's teeth. Um, but you just scrape whatever little areas and overburn that you want to do. Then what happens is you've actually disturbed the wood and you've got kind of a rough, uh, it's created a rough roughness to it, the wood itself. And it's not, when you go back to work that area again, it's not going to take the burn like you want it to. So what you want to do is you want to smooth that area out with some sandpaper. Depending on how much scraping you do, you might want to use a coarse, sandpaper. I just have lots of scrap sandpaper laying around. Um, here's some real coarse coarse sandpaper. I was just going to look at what the, the grit on it. That's uh, you know, it's stuck together now. But anyway, use a coarse grit on uh, you know a little bit of a kind of smooth it down a little bit. And again, don't get carried away here and don't worry about hitting hitting other areas because you can always come back and uh, wood burn over an area and actually when you sand it actually takes the burn better. The coarser the wood is the more difficult it is to get a nice smooth control of your line work and um, if you think of it as say a really coarse paper and you were to take a pencil and run it across it what happens is it kind of jumps over the bumps and whatnot. Um, but when, that, when you use a really smooth piece of paper, you can make these nice smooth lines and have much more control. So it's the same thing with wood. So what you do is you just, you know, you sand out an area with a rough, and then you come back in with a much finer grain, and you re-sand over it. And then, you know, just give it a feel. You know, go, go a lot by feel. Don't, don't be afraid to touch your work. Um, it's not paper. It's not going to absorb your oils like... Uh, you know, you know, like paper is, but um, anyway, uh, just feel around. Sometimes every now and then, um, like, like I can see one little area here, uh, if you can see that, probably not. Maybe uh, my neighbor's chickens are active today. She raises exotic chickens, so might be a little loud. Anyway, so here's, here's a little gouge mark, I, I think was from the original wood that I didn't quite get sanded out. And no problem. You just come back in and you just, you know, you just work that area a little bit with your rough. You know, there's another little one right there. You might not be able to see it on the video, but it's there. You know, you come back in and if you have a little low spot there, who cares? You know, you're not really going to notice it that much. Just kind of do a, and always go with the grain when you're sanding. For any of you who are not woodworkers, um, and maybe you're new to wood burning or whatnot, always go with the grain because if you don't, then you end up with scratches and you're actually injuring the grain and it, it doesn't, doesn't look good. So that's, that's the technique anyway. I won't go into a lot of depth about that. But so your, your ways of erasing and then again with a, you know, an eraser, you want to come back in. There's still some, some line work there. So what we'll do is... Um, you know, just erase out any line work that's maybe hanging behind. And it doesn't matter if you burn over it, you can actually erase. It's kind of not, it's not like paint where you paint over um, pencil marks and then you can't erase them. They're, they're stuck into the, into the work with, you'd say, watercolor painting and whatnot. But with wood burning, you can burn over your pencil marks and you can still erase them. It's kind of neat. So these little things I've been discovering along the way. Um, anyway, that's all I've got for this segment, so um, happy burning, and uh, I'll continue with this piece, and have fun.